Good morning. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. And all the time. Life is good. Komal you here is happy that he or she is here this morning. Amen. Amen. Are you glad that you are once again in the house of the Lord? Amen. Can you just check your seatmate and see if the person sitting beside you is happy? Excited? Are you happy? Are you excited? Amen. Amen. Sabi nga po sa Psalms 84.10 As we start this service, let's all stand. Hallelujah. Can we all read together Psalm verse 8, chapter 84, verse 10? Ready? Begin. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live in the good life in the homes of the wicked. Amen. Sabi dito, a single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. Sabihin mo sa sarili mo, I'm glad I'm, that I'm here. Amen. I'm Amen. Today is Saturday. We know that it's some of us don't have work. Some of us, it's our rest day. But we chose to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because it's better to be in the presence of the Lord. Where else can we go, right? Where else can we go but in the presence of the Lord? So today, let's enjoy the presence of God in the midst of us. Let's enjoy the presence of God in our hearts, in our lives. And those who are in Zoom, you can jump with us, you can sing with us, you can stand up, you can clap your hands. Let's just feel free to worship the Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you. We give you glory for who you are, God, and for what you have done in our lives. Lord, indeed, it's better, Lord, one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere, God. Because, Lord, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your presence, there is healing. In your presence, there is hope. In your presence, there is peace, Lord. Hallelujah. Everything that we need in life, Lord, is in you. So where else can we go, oh God? And Lord, today, as we worship you, as we sing our songs of praises and thanksgiving, Lord, hallelujah, just have your way. Let's, let's just have your way, Lord. No one else will be glorified in this place but you alone, God. And Lord, even as we stand before you, hear us, oh God. We are your children, Lord. And may our worship, our praises be acceptable before you, oh God. And Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, that is taking full control in this place. And even, Lord, we are praying for those who are still coming, Lord, that you will hasten their steps, God, and you bring them safe and sound in this place. Lord, be glorified in the midst of your people, Lord. Be lifted high, O oh God, for you are worthy, and there is none like you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah.
such a joy to be in your presence, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such great joy to be in your presence, God. Hallelujah. Where your people gather to worship you, to praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. It's irreplaceable joy, oh God. Indeed, better is one day in your courts, God, than a thousand elsewhere. Hallelujah. It's our heart's desire, Lord, that every day of our lives we will desire to be in your presence, God. Oh, Jesus. This is our heart's desire, Lord, to be where you are, to dwell in your presence. Hallelujah, Lord. Is it 
marriage. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you in our lives, in our church, in our community, in everything that we do. Be glorified, oh God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, God. We bless you. We bless the name of the Lord. What a wonderful way to start our day, to start our Saturday, amen, which is to praise and to give glory to our living God. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. And because God is good, we know that God answers prayers. Amen. And because God is good, we know that He wants the best for us. Amen. And because God is good, we know that He is faithful and true to His promises. Amen. And because God is good, He will never fail you. He will never forsake you. Amen. Amen. Our topic this morning is all about prayer. Can I ask you a question? What is a big prayer? <laughs> what is a big prayer for you? For you, what is something big that uh, I need time to pray for this? This is such a big prayer. I really need to devote 30 minutes, one hour of my time today to pray for this because this is really important. This is something big. Now, what is that big prayer that you have? You can, you can answer that to yourself. Is it a job promotion? Wow. Is it love life? Sabi ni Kuya. Wow. Big. Something big. <laughs> is it peace for the world? Amen. We have our own definitions of big prayers. But today, we will study about our um, verse in Ephesians, ayan, where uh, Paul prayed for the church in Ephesians. Okay? So, what, what was, what was uh, Paul's prayer? What was he praying for? In that, in that church. Ephesians 3.20 Now, all glory to God who is able. Say the word able. able. Through his mighty power. Say the word power. Power. And work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. So all of the prayers na naiisip mo, all of the prayers na hinihiling natin that we are asking from God, God can give more than all those things. Infinitely more than we might ask or think. More than what our human minds can think of. More than what our human minds can imagine. And today, I challenge all of you that no matter how big that prayer is, or no matter how impossible that may be, that you think to yourself, let this be our encouragement. Wala ka pang naisip, at wala ka pang hiniling, na hindi kayang ibigay ng Panginoon. Amen. Amen? More than what you might ask or think, that is how powerful God is. Amen? Let's bow our heads and pray. Most gracious and loving Father, we ask of you today, Lord, activate our faith, God. Let our faith, O oh Lord, be bigger than what it used to be. Father, may you reveal yourself unto us, O oh Lord, in a, in a very special way, God. Lord, we want to encounter you. Lord, we want to experience you. May you be alive in our hearts, not just in our words, God. 
may you be alive, O Lord God, in our minds, in our hearts, and in our actions, O Lord. Not just the way we know you, God, but the way we understand and fully commit to your words, O Lord, that whatever you say, God, is true, all your promises are true, Lord, and there is nothing impossible to you, God. This is our prayer, Lord, that we may stand, O Lord, as your children, as your heirs, God, knowing that you are our faithful Father who is faithful to his children, Lord, and who loves his children very much. We praise you. All glory to you, God. We give you the highest praise, the highest adoration, Lord. In your most precious and muchless name, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen and Amen and Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So earlier I asked, what is a big prayer for you? Now I'm going to ask you, do you pray big prayers? Or we pray, alam niyo po, I, I know someone, I asked I ask that person, do you pray? And then that person replied, of course. When I wake up, before I eat, before going to bed. I said, okay. <laughs> Very good. You pray when you wake up, before you eat, and before going to bed. Kailan pa? Kailan pa? Kailan pa tayo nagpipray? That's it? In, in every day of our lives? Alam niyo po, when you encounter God, and when you know who God is in your life, prayer is like a breather for you. Prayer is like the oxygen for you. I pray if I want a parking. I pray if I'm craving for something. I pray uh, even for those little things in, in my everyday life. Because God is always near. Diba kinanta natin kanina? Now that you're near. Diba? Everything is different. Everything is different. Even our prayer lives will be different when we experience God near to us. Amen? So, let's go through Paul's prayer in Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 21. Hihimay-himayin po natin itong prayer ni Paul. Verse 14, For this reason, I kneel before the Father. Do you kneel when you pray? You can do so. Pwede rin hindi. Because God is everywhere. God can hear you anywhere you are and whatever you're doing. 15. For whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. 17. So that Christ may dwell. Take note for those words that are underlined because those words are important. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. In verse 19, and to know, to grasp and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Wow. I cannot hagamayin po. I still cannot imagine or fathom the fullness of God. Now to Him, this is our key verse, verse 20, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us, to Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever Amen. Let's give the Lord a big clap of praise. To Him be the glory. 
Now, in this prayer of Paul, nakita po ba natin that he prayed for, Lord, please give us something to eat. Lord, give us shelter. Lord, yung boss ko, how many years I've been working, no promotion, no increment. <laughs> Or did he pray, Lord, can you please touch the heart of that person? Um, make him accept you as your personal Lord and Savior. Lord, please heal that person. Are these the prayer of, of Paul in, in, this, in this chapter? And so then when I was reading it, I realized there are more prayers that we are not praying for. There are bigger prayers that we are not praying for with much more weight and much more importance. The problem is we want to make an impact in the world but our prayers are mostly self-centered. Lord, give me food. Lord, provide for me this month. Lord, I need to pay my dewa. I need to pay my rent. I need to pay the house. Lord, I have a conflict with my friend. It's all internal, internal, internal. But when you ask, what do you want to be? What is your purpose as a Christian? Ah, to impact the world, to save um, as much souls as we can so that Jesus can come soon. To be equipped for every good work, to go to the nations. But when you pray, but when you ask them, what are your prayers? Uh, yung anak ko po, may sakit. Sigarito, may sakit. Someone is sick. Someone is like that. Please pray. And then sometimes it's not bad prayers. Don't get me wrong. They are not bad prayers at all. I I believe that if you come to God with genuine heart and authenticity. There is no such thing as parang wrong prayers because you're just merely communicating with God like a father, like a best friend. Diba? But there are much more in our Christian life right now. And because we are already nearing to the end of end times, we hear wars, we experience pandemics, natural calamities here and there I think we need to level up our prayers Amen Now is the time that the church of God will arise in prayer Awaken the prayer warrior in you Can you tap your seatmate? Awaken the prayer warrior in you Amen So even, even in the youth ministry we we were kind of, hindi kind of, talagang we realized that this is something that we are missing. You know, yes, we practice, yes, we do this, but there needs to be prayer, praying as one. And so, we summed it up to PWTD. Yung gagawin namin talaga for this year. And this is our main focus for this year. Prayer, worship, teaching, discipleship. Amen. Prayer, worship, teaching, discipleship. This is what we need. Amen. So that we can progress. Una, una po yung prayer. And we said, if we can wake up 8 a.m. for other things, let's wake up, not bad, 10 a.m. to pray before our worship service. Let's bring back our intercessory prayer. And then we we made it happen for this year. We prayed before we worship, and we saw a big difference. Amen. That is the importance of prayer. Amen. So now, on the next slide, before we we go through what we should pray for, let's learn first what should be our attitude in prayer. Kanina I mentioned. You can pray anywhere. You can pray anytime. God answers you. But there is a perfect attitude of the heart. There should be oneness. There should be um, humility. There should be 
acknowledgement that God is sovereign and king. Amen? You can pray anywhere and anytime, but check the attitude of our hearts. Okay? In Isaiah 54, um, this is the prophecy in Isaiah 54, sabi, every knee will bow. You know, earlier when we read in Ephesians 3, sabi, niya, sabi ni Paul doon, for this reason, I kneel before the Father. I'm not saying you really have to kneel, but if you can do so, we can do it. We can kneel before God. Why? Because it symbolizes humility. And it's very natural for you to kneel when you are in front of someone who's high in authority. I always remember um, our, our um, CMA director, Kuya Marlon, he always gives this as an example. He tells us it's very hard for us to grasp what, um, how a presence of a king in front of you and what you should react because we live in a democratic country. There are no kings, prince, princesses, diba? Hindi tayo namuhay din sa Joseon era, mga <laughs> K-drama fanatics dyan. <laughs> hindi, hindi tayo namuhay doon that when the king comes and the king arrives, everyone will bow down. Right? Hindi tayo nabuhay sa ganon. And so for us, it's more of a dramatization. Parang, anong drama yan? Diba? Anong ano yan? But, we are in God's kingdom. And God is our king. And so when we approach God's throne of grace and mercy, it is just natural for us to bow down. Now, if we cannot physically bow down, there is a still a spiritual meaning behind this. Your heart must bow down in worship. Your heart, hearts must bow down in reverence and awe of God. Amen? Of God's goodness, of God's greatness. Amen? So that should be our attitude in prayer. Hindi dapat boastful. Hindi da we should not be like, Ayo yung God. Lord, do this, do that. Diba? We cannot do that in real world. Kung tayo ay namumuhay sa kingdoms, we cannot do that. If you want to ask something from the king, diba? Yung iba, hindi nga tumitingin na you cannot look, look at the king um, with, with eye to eye. Diba? There is this song, Are you ready to look into the eyes of fire? Because when we look God, look at God eye to eye, it's, the, it's a consuming fire. Are you ready to look into the eyes of God? Kasi lahat yan mabuburn. Diba? Mabuburn yan lahat. Okay? So, our hearts should bow in reverence. We can also physically bow. That should be our attitude in prayer. We should acknowledge the presence of the King. Okay? Because God is our King. King of Majesty. Amen? Amen. This is the correct posture of the heart when coming before God. Amen? Ephesians 3.14 For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? On the next slide, there is this question, why should we pray big? Why should we pray big? Okay? So, bakit, bakit natin kailangan um, mag-pray ng big prayers? Why, why, why is that needed? Pwede namang, Lord, thank you for the meal. <laughs> Pwede namang, ay, Lord, ang sarap ng ulam, thank you. <laughs> or, Lord, it's such a tiring day. And then that's it. We need to pray big prayers because of these three reasons. First reason is, God is knowledgeable. He knows everything. The second reason is God is able. He can do anything. And the third reason is God is willing. He is willing. You see this man of faith wrestling with God in prayers. You see this um, man, on, man of faith in the Bible 
At sinabi ng Panginoon, if there is just one who will stand in the gap, but if there's just one, because God is very loving, ayaw niya na tayo ay um, mag-put into destruction. He is willing to help us. And this is an encouragement for us. God wants to take you out of that situation. God wants to give you a good life. God wants to provide for you. God wants to save your friend. God wants to save your family. Amen? I was having a conversation with Pastora Alice, my mother, um, I think two, three days back. And we were in the car, and then there is a situation that we are discussing, and then sabi ko, um, just let it be, mommy. Let, let the will of God um, prevail. Ayan, parang for me, parang, eh, ganun talaga, what can we do? Just let the will of God happen. Whatever happens, happens. So, parang, and then, my mom said, she did not correct me, pero she stated her own personal belief and faith. Sabi niya, in, in Tagalog, para sa akin kasi, kung gaano mo nakikita, kung gaano mo kalaki nakikita ang Panginoon, nagiging ganun siya sa buhay mo. Yun ang sabi ni mommy. And I was struck, and then I said, Maybe that is true. Maybe because the people in the Old Testament, New Testament, we can see great breakthroughs in their lives because they saw God as a big God. They saw God as the God who performed miracles. They saw God as the God na bumuhay ng patay. Amen? Who turned water into wine. Who healed the blind. That's how they saw God. And that's very difficult because at this present age, hindi natin kasama si Jesus himself. But there are miracles upon miracles that we are experiencing every day. The problem is our faith. Amen? Pastora Ali said, the way you see God that's who he becomes in your life. Kung sabi niya, kung ganito lang ang tingin mo sa Diyos, eh di ganyan lang siya. Ah, sa'yo. Eh sa akin, ang laki ng Panginoon, ang laki ng Diyos. That's what she said. And I said, yeah, maybe we should wrestle with God in prayer. Maybe this is the time that the Church of God will arise and wrestle with God in prayer. Not just give up on our faith and say as an excuse, Ay, ano na, let the will of God prevail, let the, ano na, kung, kung ano na lang mangyari, kung ano na lang ang will ng Lord. But deep inside, yung faith natin is too weak. Amen? It's too weak. So, He is knowledgeable, He knows everything, He is able, and He is willing. Now, in the next slide, this is our problem. This is our problem. Our problem is small faith that is resulting to small prayers. Lord, please, please, pagalingin mo na si ganito. If we read the Bible, we do not just ask for healing. We claim healing. Amen? Because prayer is enforcing the will of God. Is it God's will to heal? Yes. By His stripes we are healed. Tapos na nga, we have the victory in us. Pinag-pray mo. And namatay. Ano pa na yun? Lord, sabi mo, you will heal. Are we talking about physical life here? No, because this is not our destiny. We are aliens of this world. Amen? So the moment we understand that we are not citizens of this world, and citizens of heaven, you must have prayed for physical healing, but God gave them spiritual healing, eternal life. Amen? His ways are not our ways. We just have to believe. Sometimes we do not need to understand everything. We just need to obey, and then we will see. In the world, it's different. 
Patingin nga kung totoo. Can I see if it's true? Diba? In God's kingdom, believe and then you will see. Believe and then you will see. You don't have to see everything. Sa Abraham ba, nakita niya yung many nations? No, right? These men of faith, they believe despite not seeing the answers to their promises. But deep in their heart, they know that they have received the answers. Amen? These men of faith. Amen? So because of our small faith, we are half convinced that it even mattered. Will my prayer change anything? And this is one of the reasons why many Christians are not prioritizing prayers. Sabi nila, if you want to humble a man, ask him or her about his or her prayer life. Kasi lahat tayo parang, this is something that we neglect. Why? Because prayer is, we feel, is a hard work. And it's easy to skip. Sige po, let's not pray this week, next week na lang po. <laughs> Sige po, wala po tayo prayer this week, next week na lang po tayo mag-pray. You know, prayer is not just a gathering. Prayer is not an event. Prayer is an encounter with God. That whether you are alone, you are together, you are three, you are hundreds or thousands, you can pray. Amen. So, let's have big faith and let's pray big prayers. Amen. Next slide. Sabi dito, our small faith leads to small prayers. We need to dare to pray big and bold prayers to God. Let's challenge our faith. At that time when I was having this um, chat with Pastora Alice, that time, parang for me, I don't want to challenge my faith. And when I was meditating and asking God, what is the problem? It's not that I don't believe you, Lord. I realized that the problem is our pride. Our ego. Kasi sometimes when we profess something and it did not happen, natatamaan yung pride natin. Na parang, ayoko, I don't want other people to say something bad to me or I don't want other people to see na, okay ka mo, you prayed and nothing happened. So, it's not about what God can do, but it's about our image. And that is the reason why we don't want to challenge our faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, if you will not bow down, I will throw you to the fairy furnace. If you are one of these three brave men of God, what will you do? Tara na, let's just say sorry to the Lord after. <laughs> Ang importante, let's save ourselves. Para, you know, para makapag uh, work pa tayo for God. Sometimes we justify it. But uh, we can still serve God. We can still do this. It's, this is important even though we compromise. It's okay. It's for the better. It's, it's um, look at the big picture. Okay lang yan. Compromise ka muna ngayon. Sometimes we justify. But then at that point in time, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego challenged their faith and said, Anong sinabi nila? Whether my God saves me or not, I will not bow down to your idols. I will not bow down. And that's how strong their faith was. Lord, whether you heal this person or not, I know that you are still good. Lord, whether you take me out of this or not, I know that I am protected for and provided for. Lord, whether you give me this job or not, I know that you know what is better for me. We should have a faith like them. Diba? And you know what happened? 
From three, they became four. God's presence was with them. Because God is with you. Amen? So, what should we pray for? What should we pray for? In the next slide, we can see here that when Paul interceded for the body of Christ, he prayed big and bold prayers according to the might and majesty of our Heavenly Father. You are asking God to provide for your needs. But God says, even before you ask, I already know what you need. Balik na rin natin. Let's, let's check, kunyari here on earth. Will you ask your mom or your earthly mom or earthly dad, Mama, Papa, please provide for my food today. No, right? It's automatic. Your mom and your dad, they know what you need. They know that you need breakfast, you need lunch, you need snack one, snack two, snack three, and then dinner. <laughs> they know what you need. Mama, Papa, please give me a bed to lie down. <laughs> They already know what you need. But why are we doing that with God? Isn't that kind of insulting? Isn't that kind of insulting that we ask God for these things every single day without knowing that God is good, He is faithful, and He has provided for everything. Amen? So, let's change our approach. The first point that we need to pray for is power. Amen. Say power. power. According means in proportion to. And power, meaning dunamis, means mighty deeds, miracles, or achieving explosive power. Ephesians 3.16, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. We need to pray for power. So, let's try a different approach. Instead of praying, Lord, please, yung katabi ko sa work, three years na ako dito sa work, pero tinatry ko naman siya, siya lang, pero hindi pa rin siya uma-accept. Or, there is this family member, or there is this friend, that, Lord, can you please save him? Can you please save her? Let's try to change our approach. Lord, give me the power so that I may go and proclaim your gospel. Stop asking God to, you know, tap that seatmate of yours. That's why God has placed you there. The problem is, we do not have power. Even when the disciples was about to go, the Lord says, But wait, but you shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria. We need power. We are experiencing the pandemic. Let's not pray, Lord, please, patapusin mo na tong pandemic na to. Stop this pandemic. Because after this pandemic, I tell you, there's another pandemic, and then another pandemic, and then another pandemic. It's written, pandemics upon pandemics. This is just the start. You cannot say, stop this, God, Amen. because it's written in the Bible. Amen. But what we should pray for is power that we may be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. If you have the power of God, you can just command the sicknesses. Get out of my household, get out of this church, get out of this ministry, get out of my body. You have no authority. Because we have the power. Amen. Amen? Amen? We have the power within us. So, let's try to change our approach with that. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah! The second thing that we need to pray for is indwelling. What do we mean by this indwelling? The word dwell is katoikyo and means to settle down, be at ease, to be comfortable. 
It means to keep Christ the first priority and making Him at home in our hearts. We need to pray for indwelling. We need to pray, Lord Jesus, reside in me every day. Back it. If you have God with you, do you think anything can be against you? No. And that's why when you have Jesus living in your hearts, hindi ka mamumroblema kasi nasa iyo na ang best kakampi na pwede mang uh, maging kakampi mo. Di ba? So, because God is for us, God is with us, nothing can be against us. So we need to pray for indwelling. Ephesians 3.17 That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Sometimes we are praying, Lord, samahan mo ko here. Be with me in this battle. Lord, please comfort me in this battle. Lord, please... Um, where are you, Lord? I just want to experience your presence. How can we make that better? Lord Jesus, live in my heart. Be at ease in my heart. You know what the problem is? The problem is, we are treating Jesus like a guest or a visitor. What do you do when a visitor comes to your house? You clean the kitchen, you clean the sala, you fix everything. And what do you do with the mess? You put it inside the bodega, you put it inside the room, you put it here, and then you lock it. We should stop treating Jesus like a guest or a visitor in our house, our homes. Because every door or room in our hearts must be open. We cannot say, oops, Jesus, um, okay, my ministry, it's yours, but do not touch my work. Jesus, my ministry and my work is yours, pero wag ka muna pupunta dun sa banyo. My personal love life is um, no, no. Banyo talaga. Hindi na mong banyo. Oh, Lord Jesus, oops, wag ka muna nalapit dito sa bedroom. Di pa ako nakapag-ayos. It's very messy. I have all my mess. The reason why we are stuck in a lot of situation and we are stuck in things now we feel we cannot get out is because we have locked those doors. And we do not want Jesus to come in because we feel it's so messy, I haven't cleaned up yet. So, sorry Lord, um, you cannot enter. But then you pray, Lord, please fix my marriage. Lord, please fix um, fix, fix my job. Lord, please fix my relationship. But then Jesus tries to come in. Lord, wait, it's locked. Hindi ko pa siya And we do that. We do that every day. That's why our prayers are not being effective. We want God to fix us, but we don't want God to dwell in our hearts. Amen? Amen? And this is also visible in the ministry. Kuya, wag mo ko i-schedule, hindi ako okay ngayon. <laughs> I hope we are no longer in that time na, you know, we only think about ourselves. Our, our theme for our upcoming my love, seventh year anniversary, praise the Lord, is equipped for every good work. Equipped for every good work. And I tell them, I hope we are no longer in that time. Seven years na tayo, why wave? <laughs> I hope we're no longer like that. Ate, may, ano kami, di kami ayos ni boy fee or ni sarap. <laughs> so, hindi magpapaschedule, hindi mo makikita sa church, di ba? We should not be like that. We should allow God to enter in every rooms of our hearts so He can fix it. Only God can fix our problems. And it's just God. We cannot fix it on our own because if we can, there's no point of Jesus dying on that cross. If we can, there's no point of Jesus being our God. If we can, 
Eh di sana we can just live on our own. Pero hindi nga eh, we need God. Apart from me, you cannot do anything. Pray for indwelling. And the next slide, sabi dito, Is it possible to be a Christian but God is not at home in our hearts? Yes, it is. Correct. It is possible. We've been a Christian for two years, three years, five years, seven years, eight years, ten years. Pero God is not familiar with those rooms. Because you do not want Him to enter. God is not at home in our hearts. Amen? Look at your heart as a home. And when you, when, when we finish the service, um, just listen to the song, My Heart, Your Home. My Heart, Your Home. Yung po yung title. And it's a beautiful song because the lady was just singing, Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Even David was praying this. Search me, Lord, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So, instead of praying for all those little aspects in your life to change, to be fixed, why not pray for indwelling? Amen? Thirdly, we pray for understanding. Amen? So, we pray so that we may know God and to experience Him. Say the word experience. Experience. It's a beautiful word because your pastors can only share with you about who God is, how we read it in the Bible, but it cannot make you encounter God in a personal way. When we pray, pray for understanding. Lord, I have read this verse again and again and again and again, and it's still the same. There is this one lady, I've read this verse, I cannot understand. I read this chapter, I don't know what it means. Diba? Ephesians 3, 18 to 19, this is Paul's prayer. To be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and length and height and depth of His love. Fully experiencing that amazing endless love and that you may come to know practically through personal experience, this is Amplified Version, the love of Christ which surpasses mere knowledge without experience. Near knowledge, without experience. There is a big difference between knowing that Jesus loves me, between experiencing that Jesus loves me. When you know that Jesus loves you, you just know based on what you read in the Bible. When you experience that Jesus loves you, it is evident in your life. You can see, you can feel, you experience that Jesus loves you. Which one is better? For experience, right? Many times I tell people, okay lang yan kapatid, Jesus loves you. But they need to experience that Jesus loves them. Amen? So when we pray, pray for understanding. In the next slide, it says here, the power to do what we cannot do when we pray for power and the knowledge to know what we cannot know. That's impossible, right? To know what you cannot know. But nothing is impossible with God. Pray big. You can always pray for the power to do what you cannot do and the knowledge to know what you cannot know. Amen? And lastly, we need to pray for fullness. Pero we pray naman natin to Lord, make my heart whole again. I am so broken. 
Ganun po ba yun? Ganun ba yung fullness na sinasabi natin? Is that the kind of fullness that we should pray for? Make me whole again. Diba? Fullness here is a prayer to fill every part of you. I'll, let me give you an illustration. You opened up your heart, your home, to God. You opened up every room, okay, to God. And because all of the rooms are open, Jesus can be present at the same time in all of those rooms. Jesus is there in the bathroom. Jesus is there in the kitchen. Jesus is there in the bedroom. Jesus is there in the sala. If you have a garage, medyo sasyal yung heart nyo. Jesus is there too. Kung may second floor, Jesus is there too. Amen? We need to pray that Lord fill every part of me. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Psalm 16, 11. Ephesians 3, 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. The fullness of God is so vast, so wide, Kahit po ako, hindi ko ma-explain in just human explanation and words, the fullness of God. There are a lot of topics and sermons about the fullness of God. But I know that God is bringing me there closer and closer to experience His fullness. I will not say I am already there. Kasi... I think we will experience that kapag talaga kasama na natin si Jesus, yung all His fullness. I cannot imagine. I feel like I am just surrounded by His presence everywhere. And I want to experience that. Let's pray for that. Let's pray for God's fullness. Instead of just praying to make your heart whole again, emotionally, mentally, physically, Let's pray for fullness. Fullness of God every day. It's impossible, right? But Paul dared to pray for God's fullness. To be filled in, out, with all of God's fullness. Amen? This was his prayer. Amen? So, as a summary, what should we pray for? We need to pray for power. We need to pray for indwelling. We need to pray for understanding. And we need to pray for fullness. Amen. As we end, this is my challenge to all of you. In the next slide, please. I challenge everyone to activate your faith. Let's activate our faith. Sabay sabay po tayo. Let's pray big and bold prayers. Amen? Pray for the impossible. Pray for the impossible. It's now the time to change the way we see prayer. That prayer is just asking, asking, asking the word, give me this, give me that. How can I live until the end of the month? It's more than that. It's more than that. Alam niyo po sabi nila, sometimes we cannot see na sa, sa kristyano na kristyano siya. Bakit? Saan ka nakikita, nakakita, you are Christian, you profess that God is big. You are Christian, you profess that God heals. You are Christian and you profess that God is a big God and He owns everything. But then the way you act is so small and so little. Amen? Let's not be like that. Again, like what Pastor Ali said, kung ganito lang ang tingin mo sa Panginoon, hindi ganito mo siya nakikita sa buhay mo, kasi ganito lang siya eh. Pero kung ganito ang tingin mo sa Panginoon, nagiging ganun din siya sa buhay mo. Because that's how you see God. Big prayer, big God. Amen? Amen. 
In Ephesians 3, 20 to 21, our key verse, now to him who is able to carry out his purpose. God has a purpose in your life, Kapatid. And do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think. Infinitely. Infinite. So, katin niyo po yung infinite. Tapos bumalik po kayo sa akin pag nasukat niyo na. <laughs> Infinitely. Beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, dreams. According to His power that is at work within us. To Him be the glory in the church and in Christ. Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big clap of praise. Father God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We know that you are our big God. You deserve the highest praise, O Lord. You deserve the highest worship. Panginoon, salamat po, O Dios, Because you have given us this direct access to pray to you. You have given us this direct access to just come before your throne of grace, God. This is a privilege, O Lord, of being your children. And we ask God, teach us to pray. Let your Holy Spirit teach us and convict us, O Lord, to pray every day. To pray big, bold prayers. To pray for the impossible, God. To pray for power, Lord. To pray, O oh Lord, for, for indwelling. To pray, God, for understanding. And to pray, Lord, for fullness. Paminoon, we thank you because you are faithful and you are true to your words, God. Father, rise up your church. Raise up your prayer warriors, Lord. Raise up your people who will stand in the gap and pray, especially in these times of need, Lord. Let us not be scared of what's happening around us. But let your supernatural strength, O oh Lord, spring forth. Prepare us, Lord, for what we are praying for. Prepare us, God, for what is yet to come. This is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody says, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Oh, glory to God.